Hello, everyone. My name is Satyajit Tadeshwar, and I'll be talking about extracting change data capture events from Cassandra using Flink. So let's jump straight into the problems slash use cases. At Netflix, many services use Cassandra as the primary data store. And for many of these services, the data that is stored in these column families is the source of truth. For folks who are familiar with Cassandra's architecture might be aware that the data that is organized in these column families is optimized for query patterns that the application is expected to run and is not suitable for running ad hoc queries for analytics. Also, let's say if your column family schema allows to run a subset of analytical queries, you don't want to run them on a live cluster taking production traffic. So this is the first problem. There were other set of use cases wherein some teams wanted to run some business logic or some offline online workflows based on the updates happening for a given partition or a primary key. So both of these use cases fall into two separate buckets, mainly replication and event processing use cases. And apparently it seems like both these use cases can leverage CDC. And that's what I will be talking about in this presentation. So today I'll talk about what is a change data capture stream and how to leverage that stream in a typical data pipeline. I'll talk about the CDC connector that we built for Cassandra at Netflix. I'll talk about its operation. I'll dive, it, I'll dive into its architecture. I'll talk about some of the design decisions that we took and the trade dots and the trade-offs that were factored in for those design decisions. So what is a CDC stream? So as per Wikipedia, in databases, CDC is a set of software design patterns used to determine and track the data that has changed so that action can be taken using the changed data. In many databases like Postgres and MySQL, there is something called as a write ahead log, which is present on a leader instance which is used for replication. This write ahead log can also be used to leverage CDC stream. Now to explain what is a CDC stream, let's take an example. So let's assume that you have an imaginary payment table for your customers, wherein you have customer ID as the partition key, and you chose, let's say, region as the clustering column, and you have a bunch of other regular columns. Now. If you run this insert SQL statement, which inserts a new row for a given primary key, the corresponding CDC event would look like something like this. So at Netflix, we had a specific spec for the CDC event. And the example shown here does not show all the attributes. It shows some of the important attributes, which is an ID, which uniquely identifies the CDC event the operation type, which indicates what kind of mutation it was. And in this case, since it was a newly created row, the operation is create. It has an event timestamp, which is, in this case, is the coordinator timestamp. And the payload is the full view of the row in the form of an Avro record. Now, let's say you updated the same row, the payment status as processed. The corresponding CDC event would look something very similar with the operation type as update. Again, it'll have the timestamp when the update was made and it'll have the payload, including the row, the column that, that was changed. So you could imagine a series of these mutations happening on this column family, which would generate a series of CDC events and that constitutes a CDC stream. So let's see how the CDC stream can be leveraged in a data pipeline. So this diagram shows a typical data pipeline with its fundamental building blocks. Usually there is a producer which sends data to a source. And in case of a CDC pipeline, the producer is a database. The next component is a source connector. Source connector is responsible for extracting the mutation information from the database and converting into a corresponding CDC events. Now the source connector could be deployed as a standalone component, or it could be running as part of a database instance. It depends on the implementation. 
A source connector then sends these events to a dedicated Kafka topic. Kafka, because at Netflix, Kafka is the chosen mode of transport for these events. Now this Kafka topic on a dedicated Kafka cluster becomes a reusable CDC event source, which can be leveraged by the pipe, by different data pipelines. The data pipeline here, which is shown as a DAG comprising of multiple processing patterns or processors. The processors could be filter, projection, enrichment, etc. Eventually, the data is being sent to a sync. And in case of a data replication use case, the sync could be, let's say, warehouse, uh, in Elasticsearch, or another database. And in case of the event processing use case, data could be sent to another Kafka topic wherein, wherein it's further consumed by a downstream component. So let's talk about the Cassandra CDC connector that we built at Netflix. The connector is responsible for processing mutations happening on a configured column family. And when I say processing mutation, it involves extracting the mutation information from the storage layer in Cassandra, identifying whether the operation was insert, update, or delete, deduping the data because the connector is receiving these mutations from all the replicas in a ring, and eventually converting this mutation into a, into a CVC event and sending it to a Kafka sync. The connector is deployed as a standalone component, and one deployment maps, one connector deployment maps to one column family in a cluster. It is implemented as a fling job with a stateful process function performing most of the business logic. It uses RocksDB state within Flink for state management. And it relies on other existing infrastructure running in Netflix, which I will dive into deeper when we talk about the architecture. So before jumping into the connector architecture, let's talk about its operation. The connector operates in three modes, which are called bootstrap, real-time, and backfill. So whenever a new connector is provisioned for a column family, bootstrap is automatically triggered. And as the name implies, bootstrap mode is to bootstrap the sync with the source table data for a newly created connector. For this mode, the connector relies on a snapshot, which comprises of a list of SS table files. For folks who are not familiar with this, what an SS table file is, I'll talk about little, I'll talk about it uh, later in the slides. The next mode is real time mode. So once the bootstrap is complete, the connector switches into real time mode to process the real time mutations happening on a table. For this mode, the connector relies on a specific feature in Cassandra, which is the incremental backups. So whenever incremental backups are enabled at the cluster level, Cassandra creates these SS table files for incremental mutations. And these incremental SS table files are not impacted by regular compactions. We'll talk about this more when we talk dive into the architecture. And lastly, there is a backfill mode, which is very similar to bootstrap mode, except for it's triggered by end users to do a backfill. So this diagram shows the CDC connector architecture at a very high level. Let's walk through each components one by one. So on the left-hand side, for simplicity, I've shown a three-ring, a three-node cluster in single region, each node identified by its token range. So you can imagine that the column family for which this connector is provisioned is constantly receiving insert, update, and delete mutations. For folks who are not familiar with Cassandra's internals, Cassandra uses log structured merge tree, also known as LSM tree, for its storage layer. So whenever a write happens in Cassandra, the, the node that which, is, which is handling the write request writes the mutation into an in-memory data structure called as memtable. The write is also written into a commit log on disk for durability. Based on a multitude of configurable parameters, 
Cassandra flushes this mem table into an immutable file called ssTable file, also known as sorted string tables. This ssTable files form the core of the storage layer in Cassandra. Now at Netflix, for all the Cassandra clusters, a sidecar component is deployed along with each Cassandra node instance. This sidecar was developed many years ago at Netflix and for the purpose of simplifying many of the administrative tasks for Cassandra operators. So along with the administrative tasks, this sidecar also serves an important purpose of doing backups for these ssTable files. So let's say a cluster at Netflix is scheduled to do backups every four hours. In that, in that scenario, the sidecar will trigger a snapshot every four hours. And that snapshot would comprise of a list of ssTable files uh, that are needed to recreate that instance. It will then upload these snapshot as well as the ssTable files mentioned in the snapshot to S3 for, as a backup. For clusters in which the incremental backups are also enabled, the incremental ssTable files are also uploaded to S3. On every successful file upload, the sidecar also sends an SNS notification to a dedicated topic. So this infrastructure has been running at Netflix for many years now. So the CDC source connector for Cassandra leverages this existing infrastructure. It taps into this SNS notifications and routes them to a dedicated queue which is provisioned for each connector deployment. The most important information in this notification is the S3 path to the SS table files or the manifest files uh, slash snapshot files, which the connector is supposed to consume in order to extract the mutation information. And there are two types of notification, one for snapshot and one for incremental. So in the bootstrap mode, snapshot notification is utilized and in case of real-time processing, incremental notifications are utilized. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the, the CDC connector implementation, which is shown in this box here. Let's zoom into that component. So as I mentioned earlier, the CDC connector is implemented as a Flink job. We chose to use Flink because it provides certain consistency guarantees and some which were that were needed for the connector. It also provides APIs and operators for stream processing that were needed for the connector business logic. It also provides inbuilt mechanism for, uh, for managing state locally uh, for faster access using RocksDB. And it also provides durability guarantee for the same by checkpointing it at regular intervals. So if you notice in this block, there is a small component called custom Cassandra Flink source. So in order to implement this a Flink job, we had to implement a custom Flink source. The reason being Flink has many inbuilt sources, for example, Kafka source, a file source, but it has no inbuilt source for reading SS table files that do directly from S3. So we built this Flink source by implementing the Flink source APIs. For folks who are curious and know, want to know more about the Flink source APIs, they can go to the Apache uh, Flink web, uh, website for the documentation. For folks who are more curious about the Flink source APIs, uh, they can read up the documentation on the Apache Flink website. The Flink source did two important things. First one was listening for these snapshot notifications, which would point to the S3 path for the SS table files, which served as an input split. In Flink terminology, a split is a unit of work. And in case of this connector, the unit of work was a single SS table file. The second job that the Flink source does is the complex orchestration of assigning these splits to task managers slash workers for reading. That way it can distribute the work among the task managers. So once the task manager has read the mutation or the SS table file, it is then followed by uh, an, an operator which does the complex business logic of 
processing the mutation information. And when I say processing, it is looking at the local state to identify whether it was an insert, update, or a delete. It is deduping the information, uh, sorry. It is deduping the, the, it is deduping the mutation information from different replicas by looking at the state. And eventually it is converting this mutation information into a CDC event and sending it to a Kafka sync. And as I mentioned earlier, the input splits discovery, which is done at the job manager slash the link source level is done using the snapshot and incremental notifications via SQS. And then as I mentioned in the generic data pipeline slide, the Kafka source now is populated with the CDC events, which can serve or which can be leveraged in other data pipelines. And that's what the teams at Netflix did with this Kafka source. So this is this is the architecture in a nutshell, and it is a, at a very high level. Let's talk about the trade-offs that we made in this architecture design. Now, first and foremost, most of the use cases at Netflix were okay with few minutes propagation delay. And when I say propagation delay, it's the delay between the mutation happening in the source column family and the corresponding CDC event landing at a Kafka source. So this delay, the connector has this propagation delay in the order of seconds to minutes, several minutes. And this depends on the cluster, depending on the right throughput and many other configuration parameters. The next trade-off was build versus buy slash reuse. Like in any organization, this is a classic dilemma whether we should build or whether we should buy. And at the time of this implementation, we looked at open source and couldn't find any uh, CDC uh, uh, connector being used at production, especially at Netflix scale. We looked at some sidecar implementations, both open source and homegrown, but the Cassandra database team at Netflix were uh, not comfortable running those processes along with the Cassandra instances. The next trade-off is the bootstrap backfill time, uh, which could be several hours for large column families. And the fact that bootstrap and slash backfill use the same flink tag in the source connector as the real time uh, uh, mode, the backfill, the bootstrap has to happen before the source connector can start processing real time events. Last but not the least, Fox DB state in Flink for large column families comes at its cost. And it also has certain disadvantages when it comes to Flink scale scaling, mainly downscaling. So, just to summarize, the CDC source connector at Netflix allowed us to handle use cases that were previously not possible using existing batch solutions. It also allowed us to reduce the propagation delay from several hours in the batch solution to a few minutes. That's about it. Thank you.